It's finally happening. The Blender 2.8 candidate release has officially been released and it's been out for a couple of days now. So anybody who's been using the beta or is thinking about switching to 2.8 or is now kind of being forced to switching to 2.8, now is pretty much the time to do it. So first of all, what is a candidate release? Well, it is the you can think of it as the final release of Blender before they call it stable and official. So now is the time that everybody's doing all their final bug fixes and all that. And this is kind of a test run for what is a finished product. I mean, of course, when this comes out, it's still going to be updated weekly. So there really isn't much of a difference, but it's kind of a landmark. It's kind of a landmark for anybody who's developing scripts or add-ons or anything like that because the API isn't the same between 2.79 and 2.8. So there's some compatibility issues. So it'd be nice if everybody kind of switched over to 2.8 so you don't need to keep supporting older versions the same way that you don't expect things to still work in 2.5, you know, uh, recent scripts or anything like that. So the release candidate is out. If you go to the Blender website, you can see this uh, countdown and you see this little message right here. Blender 2.8 is almost ready. Stable release will be available in the coming days. And this is a bit of an outdated message. I'm sure this was here when the candidate was first put on the website. So within the week, I think we're going to have 2.8. It's a big deal. I mean, this thing was supposed to come out months ago, maybe even last year, almost. I don't know. It's it's really been delayed over and over and over again. But if you think about it, EV wasn't a thing before 2.8. There's been like so many crazy developments. I think Cycles has gone uh, significantly faster. There's been a ton of optimizations if you've been reading the blog. But the question is, okay, there's this release candidate, 2.8, like the real legit version is coming out pretty soon. What does this mean for you? What does it mean for Blender? What does it mean for this channel? It works on three levels. Well, first of all, for you, if you've been using the betas, there really isn't going to be anything that different. For example, here's the release candidate. It has its uh, new splash screen, which is from the Open Film Spring, and which looks a lot cooler than what it was before. I really like this design overall. So, if you notice, this isn't that different if you've already been using the beta. You might not even notice anything different at all if you got a very recent build uh, before this release candidate came out. So you, you're already acquainted, but for the people who've been using 2.79, you don't, I mean, listen, you never need to jump ship. You can download any version of Blender. You can even go backwards to 2.6 or whatever, but the reality is, in many respects, 2.8 is better and for a lot of the reasons that you might think 2.79 is better, you can actually customize 2.8 to do those things. So for example, if you like right click select and all this, that of course can be changed and you probably already knew that, but there are, there are a couple things being stripped away. There's no Blender internal render, game engine of course is completely gone, but of course in a substitute for this, you're getting something much faster. You're getting Eevee, which if you haven't tried Eevee, this thing is absolutely insane. And they also list a bunch of features down here. So for the individual, this means it's time to switch. Of course you don't need to, but it'd be a good time, especially if you're relying on certain add-ons that will be updating, or if you're programming yourself, you don't want to be programming for outdated stuff. If you're new to Blender, this is the best time to be new to Blender. I mean, it's always good because it's free, it's open source, but now everybody's kind of on the same page. You're no longer years behind, right? This is a fresh uh, thing, and then eventually 2.81 will come out. So for you as an individual, there's very little reason to stay with 2.79. Really, the only reason I can think of is if you're making some kind of movie or some kind of animation studio, and if something fails, if you have a corrupted file, it's game over for you, you have too much writing on this, finish your project with 2.79. But really, it's becoming pretty stable. I mean, there's a candidate release out. Um, I have found what I think is a bug myself, which has to do with animating masks with the compositor. You have to enable motion blur for some reason where you shouldn't normally need to. But again, this is like a small feature type bug. It's nothing that will corrupt a file, cause a crash. And I've been using the beta for a while now, for a couple months. There used to be some crashes, especially with certain aspects of like sculpting and uh, simulations for sure. It doesn't crash anymore, at least for me, and that could really be dependent on your hardware, but it has gotten a lot better. So on an individual level, this is a big deal. On the Blender level, 
this is enormous. There's going to be more developers. There's a lot more interest in Blender than ever before. If you look at something like Google Trends, um, it, Blender is becoming more of a big deal. And as much as you want Blender to be this very tight knit community thing, which is nice and it has a pretty good community, not, not very toxic, you want a lot of interest in this. The license of Blender makes it so it can never be sold. Really, it's always going to be free. It's always going to be open source. But you do want more eyeballs coming in on this. So for Blender as a whole, if you go to the um, the donate section over here, and I'm looking for how much money this thing's making. I'm looking for the um, development fund. It has gotten a lot more money than it has in the past. And eventually, they're going to be able to fund more developers than ever before. So Blender itself is getting very big, and the things that it's hoping to add in very soon are great. I think fracture modifiers coming very soon for people who want to do destruction and all that. I think a lot of people are excited about they're changing how they're doing their simulations with Manta Flow and all this. There's a giant sculpting update coming if they haven't already incorporated that in uh, that somebody's been working on and everything nodes as well. This is the most exciting time for Blender users, for sure. And it's great for tutorial makers, or maybe not so great if you made tutorials a couple years back, because they're no longer... The ideas are still compatible. The shortcuts might not be compatible anymore, so you have some new shortcuts to learn, and some of the UI and menus are definitely very different. But that that's on the individual level. That's on the Blender as a software level, which is still by far one of the best open source projects, if not the best open source projects that's ever existed in my opinion, probably in your opinion if you're watching this too. And then lastly, how does this operate on a channel level? So all the tutorials I made, I think every single one has been Blender 2.8. And let me go back to the uh, screen before, just so I can uh, scroll through this because it's a lot more interesting. Um, every single tutorial I've made has been 2.8 related. Of course, the UI has been tweaked a bit, especially earlier on when the beta was a bit looser and it wasn't what you would call uh, frozen. I think that's what they call it. But I was thinking of starting a Blender 2.8 beginner series. And I know for those of you who have been paying attention to my channel, I made a Blender for beginner series, which was highly edited. And it took me a week to two weeks to make 10 to 15 minutes. So I was taking two weeks to make one episode, which it was polished. It was the best looking in my, it was the best looking Blender tutorial for beginners that's ever existed. But I don't think, I, some people commented, some people really like it. Some people think that it's not worth the time to make it such high quality. And anyways, if you're new, you want it to be nice and slow and clunky even. You want to make mistakes so people can learn from them. I've taken that to heart. I am think I'm, I think I'm going to do a new to Blender series, of course. Part of the appeal of this channel is the advanced stuff. So of course, I'm keeping that, especially stuff to do with motion tracking, because that's my personal passion. But yes, yeah, so that, that, that's how this is going to affect everything on a channel level. I think I'm going to make some more tutorials. But this is very exciting. Uh, time for Blender. If you're new, welcome. If you're, you know, upgrading from 2.79, I hope you can get acquainted very quickly. There's like very minimal shortcut changes. Like I think one of them is you might be used to something like, what was it called? I only know what it's called now. I think it was called Optimize or something. Like you had a bunch of vertices and you connect two of them. Like you slide one over to another and you want them to merge. Now it's called it's now it's called merge by distance, where it was called something else before. So you're gonna learn have to learn all these uh, tiny things, but you're gaining you really are gaining so much. The viewport has gotten ridiculous, especially when you incorporate EV, and a lot of the things are just the same, just you know moved around. There's some nice gizmos and stuff for beginners, where as Blender 2.79 wasn't that beginner friendly, but it was kind of like ZBrush and that it was this very optimized tool that once you get used to it, it becomes very natural. But of course, you can modify everything. So the release candidate is out. That's really the point of this. I am excited that hopefully no, like if there is a game breaking bug, found something that ruins everything, they need to work on it. It's not a one day fix. This is going to get pushed back. I really, really hope 
that's not the case because people have been reporting bugs. People have been, I mean, the quality of this release is pretty much dependent on not only the developers, but also the users reporting any issues. And I think they've been doing a great job. I think this release is going to be great. So maybe even, I don't even know, it might be coming out in like three days, but I think within this week is a, is a safe bet. So exciting time for Blender. Here comes 2.8. I'll see you guys on the next one.